you go. One English with jam. Sweetheart, this, this English muffin is an insult to all of Britain. Yes, sir. Please, uh, another one, uh, lightly toasted and uh, butter, no, no jelly. Sure, whatever you say. Wouldn't want to insult the queen. Pete, be rational. This bottom line approach is not going to work. Hey, I talked to court. It's over. She's dumping it. Yeah, well, I'd like to see what he says about that. He's got no choice. Yeah, well, something tells me that uh, when you tell him, he's going to ask you to choose your weapon. Fancy! I am old. This is the happiest day of my life. Oh. <laughs> oh, almost the happiest. That will be the day that I say I do. I do to what? That you're dropping the malpractice suit against Ben? Oh, now, come on. You know, we've been through this before. I can't drop it because of the circumstances. Listen, no circumstance in the world is going to make me believe that, Nancy. You could if you want to. Well, you know, that's what everyone said. They said that Dan was just using me to get Ben's money. But you know what? It's not true. I proved it. His divorce is legitimate, and we are going to be married just as soon as possible. And I want you to be my very first wedding guest. telling you, I own this news is the best Christmas present I could ask for. <laughs> that Dan Myers hasn't lied to you? Yeah, well, you know, everyone said he did, but I had Doug Hughes check out this divorce certificate, and it's real. He loves me. And I, I don't know, I just feel like a brand new person for the first time in my life. Now, look, at, I brought this over, and so that maybe you could help me pick out a wedding dress. Oh, Nancy. Don't put me on the spot like that. Now, look it. I know that you don't think he's the best man for me, but you want me to be happy, right? Oh, Nancy, of course I do, but there are no shortcuts to happiness. True happiness comes from doing what's right. Yeah, well, forgiving someone is doing what's right, isn't it? I mean, that's what you did with me. You forgave me, so why can't you forgive Dan? Oh, I do, Nancy. I don't see why everyone just doesn't give Dan a chance. You know, I didn't rush into this thing. I took Ben and Lori's advice. I made him prove himself to me. Well, he did. And so I've forgiven him, so why can't you forgive him? Oh, I forgive him, Nancy, and I pray that God will forgive him. But that won't bring you the happiness you think it will. Well, why can't finding a man who really appreciates me for what I am do that? Well, because true happiness costs something, Nancy. And the price is putting down our ways and taking on the ways of God. Now, you may marry this man and even think that you're happy. But you'll only wake up one morning to find that you're thinking and wondering whether or not you did the right thing. Well, everybody takes that risk. Maybe. But you know something, Nancy? You gave me this little cross, and it's a nice little piece of jewelry, and I love it. But I want you to understand what it stands for. Now, this cross was used to punish and kill lawbreakers and one innocent man, my lord. Now, he died that I might have that happiness. But what does that have to do with me? Well, that's the happiness I want for you, Nancy. And that won't come about by some man divorcing his wife to marry someone else. Oh, Nancy, I can't be a part of something like that. I, in good faith, I just could not come to your wedding. Do you realize that if you let Harold do this, that you're allowing deception in this case? That is why Harold and I wanted you to see the evidence. Well, I really wish you hadn't. You think the evidence is that conclusive? No, I don't think it's conclusive, but it is rather persuasive. Well, that was my conclusion, and that is why I allowed Harold the extra time to pursue his plan. You know, it's a funny thing. I, when I first took this case, I, I figured this to be the easiest one on my agenda. One that would surely win you a seat on the governor's crime commission, eh? 
Yes, something like that. And now? And now I have to admit reluctantly, of course, that Harold Webster is a much more worthy adversary than I had anticipated. Well, I will be sure to keep that one off the record. Thank you. Do you have any evidence to refute the identity of these prints? Not really. Well, in the interest of justice, let's hope they prove worthwhile. In the interest of justice, you better hope that they do, because you, you and I both know that no jury is predictable. If Webster's plan to seek sanction by this court backfires, well, I don't need to remind you that only the state will benefit. Then it would also benefit your political career. Which is why you took this case in the first place, is it not? I make no bones. I should have let Wendy Pope or one of my other assistants handle this one. Marshal, just between you and me, I, I don't care who wins this case. And I have no objection against your trying to further your political career. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. And in addition, I believe that you are a competent DA. And I think that this county has benefited from your office. Thank you, Timothy. I guess we all have our own individual goals that we want to accomplish. Mine is that, to the best of my ability, justice reign in my courtroom. And I guess I am just idealistic enough to think that it can. That is why I let Harold go through with this plan. I know what you're saying. I, I've strayed from protocol a few times myself. Exactly. But I don't want you to interpret my decision to think that I believe the end justifies the means, because I don't. I don't care if Harold Webster wins this case or if Marshall Lockwood obtains his political ambitions, as long as I get justice. But if this plan backfires, the responsibility for the deception is going to fall on Harold Webster. <laughs> okay. Well, if it isn't Mr. Uh, Davis again. Davidson. Yes, it's about time you got that name straight. Oh, of course, forgive me. And your friend? Uh, Jerry Taylor. <laughs> nice to meet you. Well, don't mind me if I don't get up, gentlemen. I'm expecting an order. Uh, that's OK. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, we'll just join you. Well, you haven't seen Courtney, have you? I'm expecting to meet her here. As a matter of fact, yes, we have. She's not coming. Oh, really? Uh, well, what he means is that I'm... Um, One English light with a touch of gold. Anything for you guys? Yeah, I'd like... Uh, uh, no, nothing for us. Uh, thanks, team. Courtney is not coming. She sent a message with me. Hmm. Now that you mention it, there is a likeness to Cyrano de Bergerac. But you're not nearly as eloquent. What's that supposed to mean? He was an 18th century delivery boy for an estranged lover. I told you he was the dueling type. What's the use? No good? Disgusting. Do you mind? Help yourself. See if I can't find something to wash this down with. Hey, look, you can throw all these 18th century slams at me, but it doesn't make any difference. The facts are the same. Courtney doesn't want to see you. Mm. You know, I knew the uh, Christmas party rigmarole in uh, Lake Forest would uh, tire her out. Well, she's not tired of the Lake Forest scene. She's tired of you, Sumner. I guess that's why we're uh, spending New Year's Eve together? Negative. She told me that you could forget New Year's Eve and forget the rest of the year, too. Hmm. I see. Well, perhaps I should just uh, go and uh, speak with Courtney myself. Uh, before you leave, you might not want to know why she made the decision. Is it really necessary? I think it'll be helpful, yeah. All right, then. You have five minutes to play out your little uh, fantasy here, and uh, then I'll be on my way. It's you that's playing out some sort of fantasy. You know why she's leaving you? Because you're treating her like some sort of piece of a puzzle. You got her right where she belongs. With no emotions, no feelings, and no life of her own. You're afraid of what might happen if she breaks out of that, too. You know what? That's exactly what she's doing. I think it's great. I'm not intimidated by that. In fact, I encourage it. I want her to be whatever she can be. That's why she's leaving you. You 
still have three and a half minutes left. I don't need the time. Well, then allow me to uh, assume the remainder of the time. To school you in the realities of the situation. If you weren't so anxious to sweep her off her feet, perhaps you'd look more closely at the personal problems her family is having. What do you mean about her mother's condition? We have that in hand, too. Oh, do you? Here she is, Mr. Carpenter. We finished the CAT scan. <laughs> Without upsetting one hair on my head. Those were the only conditions under which I would agree to submit. <laughs> Isn't that right, nurse? Any self-respecting woman would. You were the perfect patient, Mrs. Carpenter. And you look wonderful, Phyllis. I'll check back later. <laughs> I'd feel wonderful if I knew how I got here. You, you, you don't remember anything about last night? I remember you're my husband. That should be enough. <laughs> well, it's certainly enough for me. And I remember that I was here before. Was this the same room, Preston? Uh, I'm not sure. Now, don't be patronizing. You've got a memory like an elephant, especially when it comes to money. <laughs> you wouldn't spend this much on me without remembering if it was the same room. Well, it, 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 it could be. Uh, in fact, I, I think it was. Did, uh... Did I embarrass you last night or, or whenever it was I was brought here? Oh, no, 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 sweetheart. You could never embarrass me. You're sure? Look, there, there was nobody home last night. The maid, you and me, when you... When I what? Uh, lost touch. Oh. You make it sound so, uh, pleasant. Like, uh, letting go of a leaf in the wind. Instead of losing all comprehension of who I am or what I was doing. It's the Alzheimer's disease. You, you, you know that. Oh, how I hate to be reminded. You know, there are other places, Preston, where I could go that aren't as expensive. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you deserve the best. You're going to get the best, as long as I'm able. As long as my name's Preston Carpenter. <laughs> oh, you're so proud, my Preston. So secretive. So spoiling, so, so proud. I love you. I'm proud of you too, Phyllis. Never forget. That's all right. It's a good sentiment, although impossible. Never forget that I could. Have you told Courtney that I've had to come back here again? No, no, but I'll, I'll be leaving shortly for Kingsley. I'll tell her then. Kingsley? Yeah. When did she leave home? Last September, she started college at Kingsley. Last September? Now there's snow on the ground. Yes. Hold me. I'm so alone. I'm, I'm so afraid. No, no, no. I can't even cling to the past because it isn't there. Well, I must say that I am surprised she divulged her mother's embarrassing condition. I also know about her father's condition, about money. Mm. Well, then you also know that my family and I are the solution to that problem. I have some idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have an idea. I just don't think you realize what you've gotten yourself into. I mean, what could happen to you? I'm not scared of you or your family. <laughs> That's not my intention. 
You know, the pathetic thing about this whole masquerade is that when it comes down to it, you really don't know Courtney. I know enough to know that she's having her entire life planned out by everybody but her. <laughs> oh, you've fallen for that ploy, is it? Oh, come on, Peter. Courtney is a beautiful woman. She's capable of getting people to believe just about anything. I'd believe her long before I'd believe anything you say. That's your prerogative. But uh, let me tell you something. Courtney is using you. But to her, you're just a fist she's throwing in my face. And it's not the first time, believe me. When she thinks I'm good and scared, and I may well just decide to let her think that, she'll come running back to me. It's happened in the past. It'll happen again. I don't believe a word of this. She's a little girl, Peter. And she's playing the rich little brat who runs away to find herself and realizes that she's going to return because, in truth, she likes caviar a lot better than she likes hot dogs and beans. The message is still the same. Engagement's off. If there ever was one. <laughs> there was one since the time she was in prep school. But I see your five minutes are up. Just remember this, Peter. No matter what is on or off, Courtney will decide, not some messenger. I'm telling you, Pete, he may not look tough, but I'd rather tackle with one of the school's linebackers than that guy. Just suppose that we could convince Dan Myers that we've accepted him into this family. And that's why we're having the wedding here. And then, just before the wedding begins, we make him believe that Nancy's dropped the lawsuit against me. But she's not going to drop it, Ben. But what if she pretends to? No, my sister's not gonna set Dan Myers up a second time. She did it once with a divorce certificate. And now the two of them are thicker than they ever were. Let's face it, Lori's plan backfired. Well, maybe Nancy doesn't have to pretend. Maybe, maybe we can pull this whole thing off without ever telling her about it. In my living room? Mm -hmm. You mean have it all set up for the wedding? Yeah. Lie to her and lie to him? No, no, we wouldn't lie to Dan. We wouldn't lie. We, we would only tell Dan that Nancy believes that their love surpasses any kind of financial gain. And she does believe that, doesn't she? Well, yeah. Okay, but she... okay. Then we tell him that money isn't important to her when it comes to their love. I don't know, Ben. I think you better talk to Lori about this before you go any further. I will, I will. But you've got to remember, Nancy gave Lori permission to expose Dan that first time. Nancy thinks that we failed. But if we can convince her that Dan would walk out on his own wedding, that he'd leave Nancy standing right here in the lurch if there wasn't any money involved, it just might work. There, there, there. Sweetheart, everything is going to be just fine. Why don't you lie down and rest for a while, huh? That's a good idea. Uh, why did they do a brain scan on me? Well, it, it, it's the Alzheimer's disease. They, they wanted to see if there was any blockage in the brain that's causing the lapses. Mm. They've got a lot of new tests they want you to try. They're making new discoveries every day. What's the matter, Phyllis? Look. Why? That woman is wearing my clothes. Who? The exquisite gown and, and robe that... Who do you think you are? Oh, Phyllis, now that wait. you can come in here and take my things. By what right? Nurse! I, I've heard about people like you stealing in under pretense of doing good. Phyllis. And, and stealing from others. I... Your day will come. Every... I'm warning you. You won't get away with taking my clothes. If you were so desperate, why didn't you ask? I would have given you something yeah. to yeah. wear, All but right, not Mrs. my Carpenter. best gown all right, and Mrs. robe. Carpenter. You'll be all right now. I just want you to lie down for a while now. Bring her over. Come on, Phyllis. Here. Sit down, honey. Right there now. Here you go. Put your feet up. Turn around. Let me get the pillow. There. You're all right. Phyllis? Phyllis? 
It's no use, Mr. Carpenter. Not until she comes back. Testing. Tell Courtney I'll come home and see her soon. If this plan doesn't work, Ben, or worse yet, if it does, what's it going to do to Nancy? Well, everybody knows where this marriage is heading. It can only end at force. Now, which would hurt her more, to learn the truth up front and be free of that man, or to go along with his deception and face an even greater tragedy later on? Well, I'm beginning to see your point, but I'm not sure about the strategy. Okay, let's say we're wrong. Let's say he does marry Nancy, even after we tell him that she's going to drop the lawsuit. What happens then? Well, you tell me. The two of them live happily ever after. But come on, you and I both know he won't do that, Terry. Everybody sees Dan Myers for what he really is. And this may be our last chance to get Nancy to see it, too. Okay. Two conditions, and I'll agree with you. One, that Lori agrees with the plan. Two, that you help me clean up after the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's a deal. I've got so many things in my mind right now, the last thing I can really think about is Nancy's wedding. Dave's trial? Mm-hmm. Tomorrow should be the last day. You know, I just hope that Harold's new piece of evidence puts a quick and clean end to all of this. I don't know how much more Dave can take. Yeah, it's taking its toll on him, that's for sure. But you know, Dave's a lot stronger than most people realize. Besides, he's got truth on his side. I only hope that the jury sees that truth once and for all. <laughs> <laughs>